So Kurt, thank you so much for joining us at the family conference. Um, we're so excited that you're here and we're going to share a lot about inclusion today. So what does inclusion mean for you? Inclusion is, well, it is a really, it is a loaded word, I think, because it just means so many different things to so many different people. Uh, I think inclusion is actually Australia fulfilling its contract with every single one of its citizens that we all get to live interconnected life of meaning and value, um, that we don't live a life that is siloed, that is othered, that we get to be known and seen and valued and loved and appreciated as we are, wherever we are. Uh, it can't be really contained to one part of life because inclusion is about ensuring that every part of your life is lived in the way that is, that is interconnected with the community that you live in. Do you find inclusion has, has changed at all for you as you're, as you're getting older? I've probably become more uh, fundamentalist in my belief of, of it. Uh, you know, I wouldn't have used that language the, around when we don't allow an individual to live a, in, in a life of inclusion. Uh, I wouldn't have previously used the language that it is a fundamental failure of the Australian community. The, the, I would probably have been a lot more gentle around that. Um, but we know that a good life is an interconnected life. We know that, that, that people with disabilities deserve to be living in an interconnected community. Uh, and once I finished wheelchair racing, I, I kind of had this amazing privilege that was placed on my life and this amazing gift after gift the community gave me uh, and I, I pinch myself at the at the, the the decades that I lived there but I think once I stopped I think there was a more of a something that was ingrained in me to think that if other people with disabilities don't get the the the, the, the inclusive life that I've lived what has been the point to it how do you think inclusion benefits everyone? Not just talking about our families with disability. How does inclusion benefit everyone? Disability has so much to give to all, all areas of our community. There is this experience in disability that people with disability have lived in a world that's not made for them. They've found a way to be able to you know, be who they're meant to be in this space that constantly pushes to the side and says, too hard, not welcome. You know, that, that there is so much to learn from that. There is so much to learn from the beauty that disability brings to every space, the beauty in it. You know, and I think that we, we don't talk about that as enough, uh, enough as well. There is, there is this old view of disability that doesn't take into the rich diversity that is that is very real in our community and has so much to give to every element. Thinking about your own life story and thinking about inclusion, belonging and value, when was it really that you understood these ideas? From, from the moment I was born till I went to my local school, I had my mother, my father, my brothers, sisters, cousins, neighbours telling me that, that, that I am valued in that space. Uh, so from, from then on, I understood that I needed to be in community. No child in this country deserves to be living an isolated life. No child in this country deserves to feel like they are too hard for the community around them. There is always going to be hard, always. Disability is, it can have its complications and it can be tough, but no child should feel like they are too hard. Um, and when you do get to those too hard bottlenecks, uh, go back, just remind yourself of the, the group that are around you, the fights that, that, are, that have happened before you, and regroup and go again. Well, let's, let's go to Karkor, let's go to your, your start. One of my favourite pictures, doing a bit of research on you, was around um, when you, you and your brothers were in the paddock, and there you are in front of some stumps with a cricket bat, looking... I'm assuming it either dad or your brother or whoever's there with such grit and determination. Talk through those early days. What I had that made all the difference to me is I had a community that 
when my mum came back home, the youngest of five kids, she had the, the entire system around her was was based to we will take we will take your child off you. You know, the, it was like the system had been built to make what they believed to be my, my mother and father's life easier um, by removing the problem. So ignoring those moments, um, bucking away from the system, uh, yet when they returned to Karkor, they understood that I was not just their child, I, I was, you know, my neighbour's neighbour. You know, I was my, my principal's future, future school captain. Uh, the, the, I had a community that understood that I was going to and I needed to be valued and loved and supported as I was because of the community buy-in, because of the knowledge that I deserved an interconnected life with my family and neighbours, because there was an acceptance of the difference of who I was, yet valued as I was, that changed everything. I mean, we were chatting pre-interview about you know, how inclusion is multifaceted and it is something that it's not just about for our children, um, you know, me being a parent of a child with a disability, it's not just about getting the speech on side and doing all of those services, even though important. It's more than that. So, you know, a lot of our um, people who would join us for the conference and probably who will watch um, afterwards, uh, people with young children with disability, um, what advice can we give them that it's not just about services, important, it's about you know, building that community and, you know, family leadership and knowing your place and knowing your rights. So my question is, what would you say to, to families of children with disability? Where, where can they start in this? You know, it is such a, it, it is an extraordinary complicated uh, experience when you are a parent kind of finding this, this world of disability that I had the luxury of finding my pathway over decades, right? Um, and... Uh, when I do speak about how mum found my pathway, uh, she had to ignore so much of the, um, of the system that had been created that actually led to pathway of isolation. She had to fight against that and that fight is still there and that fight is very real. Um, but I would say that you're not fighting on your own. The, 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 although it may feel overwhelming, it may feel isolating. You are not alone. There is a community of fierce advocates, and not just advocates with disabilities, but fierce advocates, parents of children with disability who are fighting so that, so that your child and every other child with a disability gets to live this good interconnected life with community. For me to actually believe that we are the country that I believe we are, we need to ensure that every parent has a pathway that is supported, that they are able to allow to build the next child with a disability who will be exponentially more powerful and strong in their belief than I am. And, you know, that's, and, and that is built through connecting parents to parents, that is built through connecting parents to community and, and family-led organisations and, and advocacy-led organisations, that real tangible experience of, you know, that, that may be that moment where it's the spark that you will see and you will feel that will be enough to alleviate what no doubt is, well, is fear. When we think of um, disability from a rights-based perspective, how, how can that switch and how can that change in the, the minds of our parents? How can that help? Well, that changes it from a, a, it changes it from a charitable model that, you know, community are, are, are bearing the, um, the, the, the issues, the problems, you know, like that is not the case. You know, that is, we do not um, make, we do not base an experience of a non-disabled child around guilt. That is, that is just not, that is not the case. You know, we don't have a, a child who is non-disabled go to their local school and feel guilty about the time that it takes for the bus driver to transfer them to the school or the, or the, or the, the individual lesson plan that's created. But we don't feel that 
killed. It it doesn't exist. So when you talk about a rights-based approach to disability, it's the same thing. Remove guilt from it completely. There should be nothing that, that you should not feel as a parent guilty because you are giving the same experience as every other non-disabled child in this country gets. You, you, when, you, when you throw a lens of disability rights across it, that is just demanding what is right. And I think this guilt of even going into public places, right? You know, is my, is my child going to act up? Is my child going to behave? Is there going to be accessible this and that? And, you know, there's a lot more places now that are really sort of coming alongside people with disability and going, how can we learn? So those social structures even that are in place, do you find that that's improving? I see that the NDIS, it was a revolution. It was a revolution in the lives of people with disabilities, like a real revolution. It was turning the tables over. This is not acceptable. We're gonna, we're gonna want to be better and we're gonna you know, start from this place that is you know, born from the community. And it was never meant to be the only revolution though. This was meant to be the spark of a revolution that demanded a revolution in every single, you know, every single school across this country, in every principal's office. There was meant to be a revolution that was sparked after and with the creation of the NDIS. There was meant to be a revolution in every transport system, a revolution across our allied health. There was meant to be a revolution in every boardroom, in every big business, in every front line of every business across this country. That would be the, 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 the facilitated by the NDIS, but would allow the interconnected life that we all know people with disabilities deserve. I don't think they, I don't think the other revolutions spark. We need to go again, right? Like we need to go again and make sure that people who are, are not participants of the NDIS, the NDIS is not something that allows a, you know, a hand wiped and we've done our, we've done our job around disability. The NDIS actually makes more lifting for more people in more parts of the community. It, make, it, it needs to be, wait, so we've created this spark, this revolution in the NDIS. It's 10 years in, we need the rest of the community to go, well, what's my role in there? You know, how do I make my playground more inclusive? How do I make sure that every school in the country is, is leaning into how can we make your child's experience in this school a great one? Um, how can we make sure that every business is looking at what are we doing to actually accurately represent community? So, yeah, there's sparks out there, uh, but we need, to, we need to fire that up again. So your new role, can you just explain what that is? Yeah, so I've, I've taken on the role of chair of the NDIS. Uh, well, chair of the National Disability Insurance Agency that is tasked with, um, with implementation of the National Disability Insurance Scheme. And what do you hope, what's your greatest hope being in that position that you would love to see? My hope is that however long I have in this role that I do everything within my power to ensure that the voice is heard at every layer of the organisation. Um, that it is heard through co-design, through uh, ensuring that people with disabilities and their families are a part of the, 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 the guide rails and the pathways that we go forward, but also that there is the presence of disability at every layer. Um, we now have 50% of the board of people with disabilities, 30% of the leadership team, over 30%. We are over 20, we are over 20% of the entire agency are people who have lived experience of disability. I think we have had an unprecedented in, uh, investment into the, the agency to ensure that we are going to go back, uh, able to go back to the principles of, of, of what we are there to do. That is ensuring that people with disabilities get to live in community, get to be who they are and get, and, and then we need the community to lean in and show and ensure that the person with a disability is valued for who they are. And thinking about families in the NDIS who are participants, the children are, what, what do you, what would be your greatest hope for them? 
well, my greatest hope is always that I hope that we are able to facilitate your child to be able to live a good life, that, that a good interconnected life. I hope that we are able to continue the progress to live, uh, that, that their child and, and, and the family feel like they are, com they are, they are safe, but also there are points that they, are, that they will be challenged, but that together we can take on that challenge. Kurt, when we think about parents, especially mum, can you if, you, if you had a message for mum today, what would it be? Uh, whenever my mum speaks to audiences of mothers, she's, she's very, um, she's always speaks about how acknowledging the, the hard work that is required in the, in the family unit. I would say her advice is just learn from and speak to par other parents of children with disabilities. Um, acknowledge that when it's hard, it's okay. You know, don't feel guilt that it's hard. Hard is okay. Um, and then just, yeah, I would, I'll just thank them for all the work they're doing as well. Because we as a, we need, we need that advocacy, we need that voice, we need that hard work to continue. And I always like that idea that, that, that the hard advocating mother is creating the hard-nosed advocate, advocate for the next generation. That's going to be the person that, that, is, that is being built, that is being nurtured within their care and love and support is the person that will shape this country to be better for the next group of people with disabilities coming through. So I'd probably just say thanks. Kurt Fernley, thank you so much for your time, for investing in our conference. And again, you've had twins, so it's a big <laughs> ask for you to be out and about. But thank you so much for being a passionate advocate on behalf of us, a great ally, um, yeah, and supporting us in, in all we're doing as parents of children with disability. We're so grateful. Thank you. No problems. Thank you.